so uh, if you will just uh, go to screener and see uh, castrol india has an roe of 70% and this is not today's roe it is last 10 years average roe bajaj finance uh, has a far lesser roe compared to castrol but what has led to a stock like bajaj finance to be a multi bagger and castrol being uh, castrol is a stock which has given zero return in the last 10 years because bajaj finance is a company of course these are two different uh, these are in two different sectors and it is not an apple to apple comparison but the point we are trying to make through this example is until unless you are a growing company where your earnings are consistently growing you cannot command a higher multiple for a long period of time and that is why castrol is trading at a very uh, i think it is around 8 8 times earnings or 9 times earnings today right and in case of bajaj finance we have already seen how the multiples have shot up right uh, the the third one is return on equity wherein uh, we have already covered return on equity in our uh, first uh, chapter of triple sk patchala uh, the recordings are available for all the participants and even people who have uh, joined this one for the first time and uh, they want to look uh, look at the recording they can still go for the recording so where we have uh, explained in detail how to analyze roe of a company or a business so in case of roe you can see uh, in case of nifty you see there is a company like ongc also there and there is a company like nestle in the nifty and you know how the uh, difference in uh, valuation these two companies have and the the sole criteria of that kind of a difference is the roe nestle uh, makes up an roe of somewhere around 50 to 60 percent right and they efficiently manage their capital but ongc is a company which is not being able to generate even enough returns on their capital so that is where the market's expectation on the growth of that business is far lesser now when we are saying this we are not saying that you should not buy nestle uh, you should buy nestle and uh, not buy ongc see ma markets are always cyclical so if there is some cyclical recovery ho uh, happening in case of the oil and gas sector today it might make sense for you to buy ongc but only if you understand the business well and if you can forecast and foresee the earnings really doing well over the next two three years four years and then you make sense and then it makes sense for you to buy ongc today but one thing is for sure if you take a longer term view say 10 years or 15 years it is easier to bet on a company like nestle than to bet on a company like ongc whether to buy nestle today or not that's a different matter altogether uh, the next point is uh, next factor is debt market always uh, value those companies more which has a debt free balance sheet that is where if you would have seen over the last one one and a half years those companies which were heavily debted and they deleveraged their balance sheet in the last one year, they were rewarded uh, really well in the market by the market, right? So deleveraging is a is a theme which always which many times work in the market because market really likes this fact that the promoter of the company is thinking about making the business more efficient, reducing the debt improving the earnings, improving the uh, strength of the balance sheet. And that is how market rewards those companies. But there are companies like in case of power finance, you'll see the debt equity ratio is 11 times and it is trading at a P ratio of three times. Whereas a company like Crisil, which is a zero debt company, there you see the P ratio is 56. You can, that was, you can say that power finance is in a different sector altogether. Crisil is in a different uh, sector. Uh, but you can see the same thing in case of Britannia and Nestle also. We covered Britannia and Nestle in the previous session as well, uh, where you would have seen that 
Britannia uses uh, debt very effectively, right? And uh, Nestle doesn't have any debt in its book. It uh, it keeps on uh, giving back a lot of dividends to its shareholder. So that is where Nestle always have a higher ROE, uh, uh, will always have a better, uh, a higher P compared to Britannia, right? Even though both are into the same sector, uh, both are having uh, dealing with uh, products which are uh, having really good consumer demand, but still you will always see Britannia trading at a discount to the uh, the uh, valuation of Nestle. 